Let's go and start with uh, Triple Nine. Yay. Yay. From your hometown. Yes, That's unfortunately. Right. You know, it's funny how, you know, we always get New York and L.A. And I was like, man, which city is this that's so crime ridden? Man. Oh, Corey. Yeah, yeah. Atlanta. Like, no wonder you couldn't wait to come to Austin. <laughs> I ain't never seen a movie fuck up a city. <laughs> right. yeah, like man. Triple Nine, man. That, this, was, that first scene, man, when it opened up at Stone Mountain, I was like, what is. No. Oh, people, let me tell you about this film right here. Triple Nine. Is about a city where the, the 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 crooks, the criminals, they pretty much have free reign because the biggest ones are the cops. Right. It's about crooked ass cops, and you might want to excuse them because the reason why they're crooked. Some people say, well, they didn't have a choice. You see, the Israeli Russian mob. I didn't even know that was a thing. Is running is running Atlanta of all places, Chocolate City, and movie opens up with these cops being in their pocket and they said all right we did this job we had a big old cool scene with a shootout and everything can we go about our merry way now and they're like nah you know we need you to pull one more job and by the way it's the most impossible job you probably won't even be able to do it but being that we will kill you if you don't you have no choice so these guys say well how are we gonna pull this off oh we got it we're gonna pull a triple nine now that's dispatch for kill a cop yeah officer down which makes no sense because apparently if one cop is down, not dead, but down, every the fucking cop. The entire Atlanta police force. The, every <laughs> fucking cop force. in town has to go to this one spot, no matter what crimes are going on, for one dude that just got a flesh wound. Ah, oh, shit, man down, man down. <laughs> but these guys figure, okay, well, these cops are stupid enough to go over there and do that while their attention is held over there. We're going to go pull our heist over here. And everybody's going to be happy, right? Oh, except for the cop we just killed. But other than that. Well, you know, you got to break some eggs. Yeah, exactly, Martin. Exactly. Spoken like a true crooked cop, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at this, and they make Atlanta horrifying. This, it, yeah, <laughs> werewolves and everything. <laughs> yeah, we got werewolves and all. They probably got vampires and shit. Zombies walking around. You've seen The Walking Dead. I mean, it, they make this shit look, look terrifying. I mean... It's the kind of shit that makes a cartel town look like Disneyland. Yeah. It, it's fucked. It, was like, it reminded me of watching an entire season of The Shield, the way they, they portray L.A., where, and, the, where the gangs and the crime is just so rampant that the cops have to be crooked. They made it look like Juarez, man. That's how bad oh, yeah. it was. It looks so grimy and it looks so, so, so horrifying because it has great cinematography and it has great action in it. And... It's not a surprise to who they got to be the director on this is John Hillcoat, who specializes in de depressing motherfuckers, man. Oh, he yeah. did The he, Road, didn't he? Yeah, he did oh, The yeah. Road. He did that Australian movie, uh, The Proposition. If pretty much, if you if if you want to make a movie where you want to <laughs> kill yourself by the end of it, call this dude right here. He's got your back on that. Now, the atmosphere is great, but you also got to have the cops. And when they say crooked cops, when they say dirty cops, they literally mean. Dirty cops. Yeah, like they never bathe. They are, <laughs> these cops are about as greasy and sweaty and slimy. All these fucking cops, they want you to know that they are dirty. Like the, the criminals are compared to, like relatively clean compared to them. When I look at these guys here, and they, you know, you got to be, you got, you have to be fair because some of these people, they're in the movie by convenience. So if they're dirty, it's probably because they were doing something else. You got Daryl from The Walking Dead who looks exactly like he does in The Walking Dead. Well, I, you know what? I've seen, um, what's the actor's name? D uh, Norman, Norman Reedus. Reedus. Yeah, Norman Reedus. Yeah, I've seen him like when he's not acting, just doing other things. He still looks grungy. He still <laughs> looks fucking dead. This dude, the, the only thing that they did to him to be in this movie because he you know the, the walking dead is filmed in atlanta and so i guess they shoot the walking dead like two blocks down the street because right. he because hey he came in and the only thing that they did to him was take his crossbow away right. <laughs> he, <that's all. laughs> he showed up and like we're gonna need this yeah thing. oh but how do i kill things now yeah. they don't even give him a gun they just took his crossbow away and just say hey just say you're a cop <laughs> you know that was it <laughs> And poor Jesse Pinkman in this. Aaron Paul. Hey, man. You know what? After all those years of playing a junkie fuck up, I'm happy to see him do something different. Oh, and this ain't nothing. About playing yeah, a junkie no, fuck up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. It was... Poor. Poor. Y'all know Aaron Paul from uh, from Breaking Bad, how he was a, a, a meth addict in that? You look at this, and it's like they gave him meth before every shoot. 
Like, they got him fucked up before they started rolling cameras. It makes me wonder, like, since Breaking Bad, has he just received script after script where he plays a character like this, and he finally just gave up and said, all right, clearly this is what they want me yeah. to do. Or he well, gave up and actually started doing meth. Hey, he did do me for speed, though. <laughs> that's cinematic classic, so let's not... <laughs> I, I think that's what drove him to this. <laughs> Probably. And apparently in this, he's doing real speed and every other fucking drug out there. Hey. Do we gotta worry about that? Cops look after cops. Same as you special ops, so it's fine. No, Marie's looking at him like, you need to lay off that shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder you know, how many times they had to cut and go, wait, can somebody rub more Vaseline on him? I'll go over there and just piss on him. Yeah, piss on it him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it looked like before every shoot, this motherfucker had a, a fresh golden shower on him. wet. It's just wet. Can fill this back up, dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look like a wet emo right <laughs> It's almost like, okay, I, I give it to... to, to Aaron Paul and Norman Reedus, because when you look at these guys, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, Norman Reedus is going to be, uh, uh, what's Darryl, his name, Darryl, no matter what. Uh, now, Aaron Paul is a ex-cop. He's strung out, and he really is a drug addict, so he's, he's looking the part. But the other cops, I mean, to let you know how dirty they are, they try way too hard. To give to, to 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 make them look like bad people, you know that you got Chuelo Edge for with scars all in his head. Uh, uh, Clifton Curtis, who he comes in there with this little slime ass Clifton rat. Collins. T- Clifton Collins, Clifton Collins he, Jr. and he has a little slime ass rat tail on the back of his head. This a little, man bun, the man, a mini man bun has a <laughs> fucking porn star mustache. Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony Mackie sitting in, how fucking hot is it in, in Atlanta That's man That's I'm wondering I was like is it really that humid It's like New Orleans in the summertime Okay man. well there you go Cuz they no don't nobody have condition air conditioning in their buildings don't nobody have coolers in their car Nobody has talcum powder <laughs> N- nothing <laughs> 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 All these dudes walking around looking like sweaty nuts man you know and the, and the thing with these dudes is that Atlanta apparently is so fucked up in this particular world that these guys just hang around in parking lots drinking and talking about their plans to murder people just out in the open. And save their dirty cops, like, loud. And Come just, on, man, we're dirty. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, Clifton <laughs> Collins sitting over there just laugh at everybody. I mean, they in a parking lot hanging like fucking kids in the middle of the night, you know, drinking a bottle of uh, Jack. And Clifton, what's his name, Clifton Curtis? Uh, Collins. Collins. Clifton Collins, he's like, yeah, man, shit, I don't give a fuck about a cop. I shoot a cop like that, man. Like, man, shut the fuck up, man. Shut the fuck up, man. I'm going to tweet this shit. Yeah, yeah. Everybody in Atlanta going, no. Get his fucking phone, man. <laughs> we don't kill every last one of us. We don't get this thing. <laughs> we could pull a 999. Well, we can just keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know who the immediately. That's the thing about the movie. These uh, these people is, are such types. No matter how great these actors are, you can tell immediately who's going to be the tough guy, who's going to be the fuck up, kind of like what you see right here. And the the other thing about the movie is like these guys right here that you see. I mean, they they they're they're relatively good actors. I mean, well, no, they're great actors. They just have bad dialogue to speak. Oh yeah, and. But at least those characters, are, you know, they're, 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 they're appropriate for their role, no matter how stereotypical or shallow it may be. Some of the other characters in this movie are just straight up cartoons. Do you have, I told you, you got the, the Israeli Russian mob in here, and they got Kate Winslet to be the head of it. And she pretty much, you know, she does that kind of Russian accent where she adds a K. At the, at the end of everything. <laughs> I, I think they saw her in Steve Jobs and her getting a nomination for it. They were like, oh, she'd be perfect. Oh, she's like, I still got this accent. You know, might as well use it for something else. <laughs> I feel like she studied for this watching old uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. You know, everything got to end with a K. Yes, darling. <laughs> well, how is it? How's everything pro- progressing? You know, like, that don't even make sense. Yeah. And when you see it, when you see other people in a role with her, it brings out the weaknesses in everybody else because you just see how hard these other guys are trying to be mad. Like, Chiwetel Edgy for you know, every everything he has to say often ends like this. Yeah. You know? I did the work. Now pay me. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a feeling of like just because you get loud and yeah. anything's gonna happen. We yeah, I have a, I, yeah, I have a whopper of large cocos. <laughs> it's just like all right, man. Hey, 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 get this thing done. You stay the f- away from my crew. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him we got a way to make it work. Oh, you quiet now. 
This is fantastic news. Thank you. I mean, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he had to look at her like, what scene are you acting? Oh, he's like, what the, like, what the fuck kind of accent is that? <laughs> The fuck did you just say? <laughs> out of all the characters that you have here, whether they are stereotypes or whether they have silly accents, the silliest has got to be Woody Harrelson because it don't even make sense what he's doing. He spends the movie as a cop, a straight cop, but for some reason he's high all the time and he's got these fake-ass Billy Bob teeth <laughs> that really don't have any reason to be there and I would even go as far as to say they kind of they're, they're a hindrance on his performance. I would like to make a difference. I know how it sounds. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're gonna make a difference. You ain't gonna make a difference. Get that notion out of your head. <laughs> you know what you need to do? Your job, keep your head on a swivel, out monster the monster, and get home at the end of the night. He can't even talk. You're the mouth monster. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the ginger in my mouth. I thought they were just playing up the role that he was very high all the time and was slurring his speech. I'm like, I can no. buy into that. No. And you know, and it's sometimes. Even times when he wasn't, you know, in a bar, he was still talking like that. And it was just kind of like. Yeah, what, what? what the fuck is going on with you? And Woody Harrelson, I know he, he is, he's the one that did that. Sometimes actors are like kids. They just want to be weird to be weird. Yep. I know that motherfucker was at a store. Found that those Billy Bob teeth in a vending machine for 25 cents. Uh, a big <laughs> actor will kind of push over a small director and go like, I, I feel like playing a character this way. Yeah. And the director will be like, uh, okay, we'll go with that. What you take right there? <laughs> I don't think you want to do it anyway. Take it. You know, it's like, all right, shit, do what you want to do, man. And, and, it's, and it's a shame because the movie starts out amazingly. I mean, it has one of the amazing, one of the most amazing car chases and shootouts that I've seen. But they just blew their wide right at the beginning because they had nothing else to do after that except for maybe one more job, which was not as great as the first one. Yeah, man, with this movie, it just feels like they were at the beginning. I like the first. I really enjoyed the first half of this movie. But it feels like somebody just jumped the screenwriter <laughs> near the middle of it. It was like, you need to fuck this up now. And it seems like that's exactly what they did. Um, starting in the beginning, like you said, with the heist was amazing. And this is probably one of the most brutal movies outside of Deadpool that we've seen so far. I've seen so far this year and including last year, too. Um, with uh, in regards to the acting, the three main characters, uh, Woody Harrelson, Casey Affleck, mm -hmm. and um, and Chiwetel Ejiofor, I feel like Casey Affleck was the worst out of all of them. I didn't care. Do you? Because I, I, I feel I like couldn't. he was like the best one. Yeah, all he was the one that was the no, most no. I'm not down. talking. I'm not talking about with acting. I'm just talking about his character wise. Like his character was boring. His character, oh, like he yeah. wasn't. I mean, of all the character development in this movie, he was the least developed character of all of them. I would, you know what? I will tell you that, Martin. I'm not gonna say something but before I forget. Because I, I kept thinking the same thing. I said, you know what? I hate to say it, because your boy Ben Affleck's going to be Batman. You know how much I respect Batman, but out of that family, <laughs> I think that Casey Affleck, is, he didn't get the same looks as Ben, mm -hmm. but I think he's the better actor. Yeah, I mean, he pulled off, he, he managed to pull off some, from some good stuff with what he had. But what you said is mm -hmm. right, though, because he's a, he's a great actor in the movie, but his, he has one thing that he does that's supposed to uh, like, uh, show that he's a tough guy. And he just keeps chewing this fucking bubble gum <laughs> through the whole movie. And I'm like, that's a, he's doing that to look tough. Every time mm. he says something, he's like, okay. And it's like, man, you chewing bubble gum. It's fucking <laughs> bubble gum. You know, get a toothpick like a real man or a cigarette or something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you look like a little boy with that shit, man. Yeah, man. And it doesn't do anything. I mean, they keep giving him a hard time about saying you're from Zone 2, which is like a very nice part of Atlanta. Like, you can't, you're not in Buckhead anymore. You can't be doing this. Whatever, I'm hard. Yeah, but, but, but get the hell out of yeah. here, dude! <laughs> and all these other people out here killing people. You're like, oh, I can't do that, man. To me, this movie it just reminded me so much of True Detective season two, where I'm like, it's this convoluted story. It's too many <clears throat> characters. You, they don't really know who the hero is. Is it uh, is it Chudel Edgy, uh, Chudel Ajaya for? Apparently, it's how you say it. Or is it Casey Affleck? They keep bouncing back and forth. I mean, it's got some great action. Uh, you know, especially two, two different sequences. Like as much as you guys liked, like like the the beginning shootout in the bank, I much preferred uh, when they were trying to track down a criminal going through the apartment building. I oh mean, yeah, that was that was extremely tense. I was on the edge of my seat through that. I, you know, I I really want to give this movie more credit. I really want to give this movie a better rating because I thought technically the way it was pulled off, I thought it was. Uh, very competently done. You know, this, the, the John Hillco is a very talented director at bringing this stuff together. But, like I said, once you pull it all apart, there ain't really much there. You can catch this shit late night on... You know what you do? You're going to see this shit in, on Redbox one day. 
And that's where that's where it belongs. That's where you get it. Or better yet, one night when you're staying up and you can't sleep and you have HBO playing and you see this shit playing, you're like, oh, okay, that looks kind of cool. It will hold your interest then. Or it might put you to sleep at the same time. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, that's what it's meant for. It's that action movie that we used to watch as kids. It just used to come on and we just used to watch it because it was on. And so I'm giving it a rental. Oh, you nailed it, man. It just feels like this movie from the from the inception of it was kind of just a hot mess. And they figured, all right, all right well, we can't base it in New York. We can't base it in L.A. We don't have the money for it. Where can we put it? Uh, we'll just go for Atlanta. And we're going to release it in February. So hopefully a whole bunch of people go out and see it because it is, again, it's not that great of a film. Um, like Corey said, man, I feel like this is something you can catch on TV. It's, it's, a, it's a rental for me. And I'm going to tell y'all, if I was, uh, if I lived in Atlanta, <laughs> I'd be mad as fuck the way they did my city. Because, I mean, there's going to be people who are going to see this movie. They, I mean, they got fucking criminals running around, crackheads dan dancing on dumpsters and shit. I've actually seen that. <laughs> okay, then. I'm, everything I've seen is correct about no, Atlanta. The, you know? the thing is, like, I was talking. I was talking <laughs> Stay the fuck out of Atlanta. <laughs> I was talking to Martin about this, and I was like, like, Atlanta's not that bad of a city. Like, the biggest thing we've had recently was, like, a teacher is cheating. Is this chick right here? <laughs> no, there was, like, a corruption teacher scandal. Like, that's it. So it's not like teachers out there shooting students or some shit. I like the way Corey keeps looking at the screen like, Hey, man, I, th I think I know her, man. <laughs> Mama, hey, yeah, man. Mama, 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 get off the dumpster. <laughs> <Shit. laughs> Corey, get your mama, man. <laughs> hey, man, she's a free spirit. <laughs> oh. to, to that point of what you guys are saying, like most of uh, a, a crime movie like this, yeah, it's going to be New York. It's going to be L.A., especially L.A., Chicago, Detroit, because these are cities that we famously know to be high crime zones. And if Atlanta was anywhere near this bad, we'd be hearing about it. That's why we're shocked. We're done with the review, but I got I do have to tell you because I pulled this picture. I didn't up. Get my, my uh, oh, I'm sorry. Get ready, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Go ahead. Wait. I'll give it for you. Rental, right? Okay, Corey, next time I have to cut you off. Otherwise I don't get mine in. <laughs> rental. There you go. Slow rental. There you go. Uh they got a guy who worked with this director before, Michael K. Williams. That's him right there. Yeah, Chalky White. Yeah, and I got to tell you, that brother, he don't make a bad girl. <laughs> to <laughs> hell he don't. <laughs> I mean, for what I was expecting, because I look at Mike. If y'all ever seen Michael K. Williams, he ain't the most handsome brother out there. But he was a drag queen in this, and I'm like, shit, well, he's kind of halfway decent, you know? It <laughs> <laughs> nah, you, man. You know, he, you know, he looked like that drag queen from the corn dog, man. You know, you know, I'd be that brother who y'all, y'all would, y'all, y'all would tell me like, yo, man, I just got a blowjob from a badass chick, man. Hey, man, that wasn't no chick, dude. Of course, like whatever, hold the hole. Hey, yeah. yo, man. Well, well, I didn't know that, so that means I'm not. Yeah. What's done is done. <laughs> Stay out of Atlanta, y'all. <laughs>